school of hard knocks. My eyes have always been the most prominent feature on my face. As an adult, I've grown into it, but at 13 years old, my eyes were big and droopy looking. I would later discover after walking into a parked truck because I was blinded by the sun that there was something wrong with my eyes. But at 13 years old, when you enter high school and kids think your face looks odd, they'll find a name for you. It was only a matter of time before they started calling me Drugsy, suggesting that I use drugs. When I got glasses in second form, the name got an upgrade, Four Eyes Drugsy. I hid my glasses in my bag the first time I got them, which resulted in them being broken and me getting a whooping. Over time, I accepted my fate as the oddball with a stupid nickname that followed me. I tried my best to keep my head down and spent most of my time in the library for the first two years of high school. It's a wonder I made any friends. One of my best friends, Melissa, is still one of my closest friends to this day. I made it through the first three years of high school and made more friends, but the experience of being teased in the lower forms had made me self-conscious and have low self-esteem. I thought all my friends were prettier than I was, slimmer than I was, and our compared grades showed they were obviously smarter. By the fourth grade, the older boys started to notice me for all the wrong reasons they found something else they could tease me about, my thighs. Later in life, one of my friends would say to me, Tandika, if I were to describe your thighs, I'd say they were thunder thighs. I've always been thick or big bone, so imagine my 15-year-old body with giant thighs. I felt like the fifth and sixth grade boys waited by the standpipe every morning just for me to tell me something about my thighs. I started coming to school late after the bell had been rung just to avoid them and they were still there, laughing in their groups and making me feel even lower about myself than I already was. Over time, I learned to cuss and would tell them off about their mother, hoping they would stop. It stopped when they graduated. I don't know if I ever told any of my friends back then about that experience. But later in life, I would meet one of those guys and I asked him why he did it, why he picked on me. He couldn't even remember me. The most humiliating experience of my high school life wasn't even a blip in his memory. Living in Sofia while attending high school, I got the nickname Bishop's Girl by the guys who hung out at the side of the road. I assumed they were all unemployed because they were always in the same spot liming when I left for school and when I returned. They were the first to introduce me to the concept of being hustled. Now to educate you, my dear readers, in Guyanese terms, if a man is hustling you, it means he wants to get with you. So while my peers at school were highlighting my flaws and making me feel ugly, the unemployed men of Sophia remarked on my beauty and intelligence for going to the Bishop's High School. I never believed them. My low percentage grades told me I was a fraud that didn't belong there. And these unemployed men had no idea what they were talking about. There was one of them in particular that did the most hustling. I secretly thought he was cute, but never spoke to him. I ignored his every advance and never uttered a word of reply when they would talk to me. I suppose this made me more alluring because the more I ignored him, the more he tried. They called him cat eyes because he had hazel eyes, which was the most interesting thing about him because I'd never seen a black person with eyes that weren't black or brown. He was handsome in a scruffy sort of way, and to my teenage self, he was the cutest guy I'd seen, well, except for Kieran Mohabat, who was my high school crush who didn't even know I existed. It was tempting, I suppose, to fall for cat eyes advances because he noticed me. Meanwhile, none of the boys in my school were interested in me. All of my friends had boyfriends by the fourth form and I didn't so cat eyes was looking more alluring by the day. My mother caught wind of this hustling that was taking place daily and put the fear of God in me. Boys and books do not go. You want to end up pregnant and a high school dropout? That helped to do it. And then there was the idea of sex that terrified me. I'd seen pictures of penises before and I couldn't understand how something so big could fit into something so small. That and my mother's warning kept my legs closed until I was 21 when I finally lost my virginity to my first real boyfriend, Leon. Anyway, I continued to ignore cat eyes and the more he tried. I remember one day I was walking home from school and there he was, liming with his friends in all his unemployed glory. 
He said his usual things about my brains and beauty, and as usual, I said nothing. One of his friends, however, decided today he would be the brunt of the joke. I don't remember what Cat Eyes said, but his friend's response is seared in my memory. Leave the girl alone, he said. Can't you see she's class and use broke up glass? I made a point of never even cracking a smile when I walked by them daily. That day, everyone erupted in laughter and I was right there with them, quickly making my way home. Did that stop Cat Eyes from trying? It didn't. He continued his advances all the way into my university years, but I continued to ignore him until I eventually moved. I never knew what happened to him and if he's still part of the unemployed crew hanging around in Sofia.